Hello everyone, welcome back. It has been a while since I've posted a vlog. There's a few reasons for that, which I will get into in a minute. But first, this is vlog number 12. It's more 2-5 No Limit Hold'em at Bellagio, filmed on Friday, November 4th, 2022. The reason I haven't been posting a bunch of vlogs is, one, they're very time consuming, but even more than that, uh, my wife was in and out of the hospital in November and December. So have not really been playing poker and haven't had time to play poker or work on the vlog. But uh, Happy New Year to everybody. I hope you all had uh, good holidays. And uh, this vlog's pretty long, so maybe that'll make up for that a little bit. I do hope to get back to bringing out vlogs more regularly. I'm not quitting vlogging or anything like that. Just had a lot of stuff going on and uh, it's been pretty busy. And uh, even, even to make it more sad, one of my dogs passed away in December, so it's been a uh, it's been a rough go the last couple months. I want to thank everybody who's watched and subscribed to the vlogs, and uh, if you are enjoying the vlogs, please subscribe. I don't post that many, so I won't be bothering you too much. And for those of you who don't know, to monetize on YouTube, you need to have 1,000 subscribers, and I'm getting pretty close. I'm almost to 900, so if you feel like helping me out, I would appreciate it if you subscribed, and if not, I just appreciate you being here and watching the video, so thank you for that. Thank you for everyone who's commented as well. I still try to uh, get back to everyone who comments. And if you ever see me out there, please come say hi. I really enjoy it if uh, people let me know that they watch the vlogs and they like them. So without further ado, let's get into this one. Hey, what are you doing? You take them in here dressed like that. It's a dress code. You can't wear that attire. After being harassed for no good reason, based on my clothing, I sit down and buy in for the table max of 500. My very first hand, I am dealt ace jack offsuit in the low jack. I raise to 20 and only the button calls. The flop is 8 4 king rainbow. I bet 20. Seems like I could have a king here. And the button calls. The turn is the jack of spades. So I turn second pair. That seems good enough for another bet to me. I bet 45. Uh, with second pair, and this time he folds. If he ends up calling, I figure he probably has a king because there's not a lot of draws on that board. The turn does bring in a spade draw, but I don't expect him to be calling for a runner runner spade. So if he calls the turn bet, I probably give him credit for a king and check a river and see what he does. Uh, maybe I call a bet, maybe I fold, depending on what it is and how I feel. But it doesn't come down to that, and I win a small one for my first hand. About 15 minutes later, I'm on the button with ace-10 offsuit. Under the gun limps. The low jack raises to 25. I call here. I don't really love ace-10 offsuit, but low jack can be raising with a wide range here, and ace-10 could be the best hand. Under the gun also calls. The flop is four of hearts, nine of hearts, ten of spades. That seems like a pretty good flop for ace-10. It gets checked to the low jack, who continuation bets for 50. I call with top pair best kicker. Under the gun folds. The turn is the six of hearts. That's an okay card also. I do have the ten of hearts to draw to if I'm somehow behind. He checks to me. I bet a hundred. And he folds. If he would have called, I'd probably check back a river if he checks to me. And I'd probably call most bets because his check on the turn is pretty weak unless he has the absolute nuts. And I don't think that's super likely. So I'm not really giving him credit for a better hand than me when he checks the turn, even if he leads out at a river. Of course, depending on what it is. But uh, I win another one. Feels good. Nothing can go wrong tonight, I'm sure of it. Just going to keep winning hands and uh, easy mode engaged. Two hands later, I'm in the cutoff with 7-9 of spades. The plus one player limps. I raise to 20. Everybody folds except for him. He calls. The flop is three of spades, king of hearts, six of spades. So that's not too bad for 7-9 of spades. He checks to me. I bet 30. And he calls and checks in the dark. Now... In general, I don't love uh, the check in the dark play. I just think it's a bad play pretty much all the time. In this situation and in most of these medium lower limit games, I find that people check in the dark usually when they have a draw. And I think their thinking is that if they hit their draw, they're going to check to try to trap you 
and if they miss their draw they're probably checking anyway so they just feel like they'll check in the dark but I feel like a lot of times that means it's a draw so when he checks dark I'm already worried that if I hit my spade I could be beat but he doesn't have that much left figure I'll, I'll see what happens the turn is the 10 of spades giving me the 10 high flush but of course my playable spades are 9 high and while that's a great card for me obviously I have 9 high if I don't make a spade draw I am a little concerned so he checks in the dark and I bet 65 and he only has about 230 left and he min raises me to 130 after this raise he only has 103 more dollars so i'm kind of in a situation where i feel like i'm probably beat here he's probably got a better flush than me but i can't really fold for 65 dollars and i know that the last 103 also is going to be going in so i'm in sort of a crappy spot in that i feel like i'm beat i have a pretty strong hand and he doesn't have that much money so for me to really get away from it I guess if I'm certain I'm beat, I can fold and save my $168, but I don't think you can really do that with a 9 high flush. He, Even if he has a flush, he could have a worse flush. I don't feel great about it. I do have a straight flush draw, but that's not really factoring into my decision here. I just put it all in. He calls. The river is a card that is left in the deck that doesn't matter. I show my flush. And he shows ace eight of spades for the nuts. Guess I was not going to hit that eight of spades for the straight flush, and uh, I do end up losing this one. But uh, I'm sure that's the only hand that's going to go badly for me in this session. Um, you're bound to have one unlucky hand per session. So uh, moving on to uh, bigger and better things, I'm sure. After that flush hand, I'm down about 200, so I add back on, and I am in the big blind with pocket queens. It folds to the button who raises to 15. I go to 3-bet and he folds before I can even cut out my chips. My very next hand I have queen 10 of diamonds in the small blind. The under the gun player raises to 15. The plus 1 calls, the low jack calls, the high jack calls, and I'm never folding in this situation so I call. I don't really like 3-betting a queen 10 of diamonds in a uh, bad position, so I I'm happy to just call here and see what happens. The flop is 8 of clubs, 10 of clubs, 9 of diamonds, so I flop top pair, a gut shot straight draw, and a backdoor flush draw. That feels like a pretty good flop for me. I'm first to act, of course, so I check. The low jack bets 25, everyone else folds, I call. Probably could raise here to see where I'm at because I do have a pretty strong hand, but I just call. The turn is the three of diamonds, so now I have a flush draw to go along with my top pair and gut shot draw, and it gets checked around. The river is the five of clubs, so the front door flush comes in, and I probably should just check here, maybe check call. Um, there's probably not a whole lot that can call me that's worse unless someone wanted to be really sticky with a pair of nines or something like that. I do bet 60. Probably should have just checked. He does raise to 225. That seems like a pretty large bluffy kind of bet, but I've played with this guy before. He's not a super strong player, but I've never seen him run a big bet bluff before with a raise like this. So I'm pretty sure he hit the flush and bet the flush draw on the flop and was just happy to take a free turn card. Based on all that, I let this one go pretty easily. I, I can't really beat anything except for just a straight bluff, and I don't think that this guy is really capable of doing that. I've never seen him do it. So I let this one go. I think the river bet is bad, but not horrible. But, you know, on a scale of 1 to 10 in badness, maybe it's a 4 four on the bad scale not great probably shouldn't have done it but i don't think it's the worst bet ever um but not a good one so i lose this hand this next hand happens about a half hour later i think i have about 425 in my stack at this point and uh this hand's pretty interesting i think and i'm gonna ask you what you would do in my position in this hand so i'm in the plus one with queen king offsuit the under the gun player raises to 20. She seemed like a pretty solid player and not doing anything too crazy. I call. 
which is maybe a questionable call uh, in the plus one for 20 with Queen King offsuit. I don't know. I think it's okay. This game's not playing huge, so I'm not worried about a back three bet or anything too crazy happening. In fact, everybody else folds after I call. And the flop is nine of hearts, eight of spades, eight of diamonds. So having played with this player for a while, I don't really expect her to have any of that board unless, of course, she has some sort of overpair or randomly nines full. I don't really expect that to be likely. And she continuation bets for a very small bet, 15, which feels pretty weak to me. So even though I don't have much going on here, I'm calling with two overs, and if I miss, I'm expecting her to check to me, and then I'm going to bet at it, because I don't think she really has any of that. And even if she continuation bets another small bet, I'm probably going to raise and see where I'm at, see if she wants to call me with um, two overs. If she does call, I'm going to put her on an over pair, probably. The turn is the Queen of Clubs. So that seems like a pretty good card for me. I've now hit top pair with the second best kicker. But now she bets 80, and that feels like a much stronger bet to me. That's a real bet. And as soon as she bets 80, I'm instantly concerned that she has ace-queen. And I'm not really sure what to do here. I think even though I just have this nagging suspicion she has ace-queen, I think a fold here is just way too weak after she makes a very small bet on the flop. And then I turn top pair with the second best kicker. So I'm really only losing to aces, kings, queens, ace queen, pocket nine, pocket eights for quads, or possibly another hand that has an eight in it, which I don't see her opening under the gun for 20 with an eight in her hand, most likely, not this player. So I feel pretty good about my hand, even though I again just have this intuition feeling that it's ace queen that she has. So I'm not really sure what to do. A fold feels way too weak to me. Um, I consider raising, but I don't think that's the best play either. So I decide just to call and see what happens on the river. The river pairs the board again. Unfortunately, it's not the queen. It's the nine of clubs. So the board's eight, eight, nine, nine, queen. And now she bets 105. And when she's making the bet, she looks kind of scared, and I read this as a blocker bet from the beginning. So I don't think she loves that the board double paired on the river, and I still think she most likely has ace-queen. I'm not really sure what to do, so this is where I ask you a couple things. First of all, what do you do in my position regardless of what she actually has? Do you think my ace-queen read is wrong? What do you think she's running here? You think she flopped a full house or has a random eight or a nine or aces or kings? Let me know what you think and how you would play my hand from this point. So that's step one. Now step two is I want you to assume that she does have ace queen because that's what I was thinking at the time. And now if you think she has ace queen, how do you play this hand? Now obviously if you know 100% she has ace queen, you probably just fold. You know your beat. Maybe she's not going to fold to a shove. But you don't know for a fact she has ace-queen. You just are pretty sure that she has ace-queen. So if you think she has ace-queen, how do you play this hand? And then I'm going to tell you what I did and my reasoning for that. So if you haven't done it yet, give, it a, give the video a pause. Tell me what you would do regardless. And then tell me what you would do if you thought she had ace-queen, even if you don't think that she has ace-queen. So my plan was on the river, if she checked, I was going to shove my last... 310 or whatever it is and make it very hard for her to call with really anything other than an eight or a nine I think at least it's pretty tough I think to call when she makes this kind of down bet blocker bet I feel like she's afraid to get all her money in so I don't think she wants to see a raise from me so my thinking is if I shove all in here I'm essentially turning my queen king into a bluff at that point but it would be hard to call without an 8 or a 9, I think, because what could, if you're in her shoes and you're thinking about what I'm calling with, what do I call a flop and a turn bet with that isn't an 8 or a 9? If it was 10 jack, I turn a straight. And there's no other draws because the flop and turn is rainbow. So there's no flush draw on the board. Maybe she thinks I'm calling with something like pocket 10s pocket sevens i'm not entirely sure but 
I think a shove is tough to call because there's not a lot of hands I would be calling a flop and a turn with, I don't think, that uh, don't include an 8 or a 9. But, you know, who knows, right? I did call with Queen King. I think it's tough to fold for the bet that she makes. 105 is not a big enough bet into this pot. I think no matter what, I think even though I think she probably has ace queen, I think you have to at least call here. I don't think you can fold. That's my feeling. If you disagree, you can let me know. I just, I have to be putting her on aces, kings, ace, queen as most likely hands. And she's betting 105 into a pot that has over 200 in it. I don't think I can fold there. So what I do end up doing is shoving for 310, which is another 205 or so for her to call. I don't think she wants to call. I think it was a blocker bet. And I think, uh, you know, I think it's kind of a tough call. She tanks for a while, does call, and she does show Ace Queen, the hand I was dreading. And uh, afterwards, she tells me she doesn't put me on an 8 or a 9 because she doesn't think I would call 20 in early position with an 8 or a 9. That sound reasoning. Um, I will call with hands like 8-9 suited uh, for 20. Or, you know, I could have definitely called with pocket 9s or something like that. Um, but I get her reasoning. Uh, it's, most people probably aren't going to call with an 8 or a 9 there. So I get it. But then after that, she says to me, that she thought it was a bluff spot because so many draws missed. And then the credit I gave her for not putting me on an 8 or a 9 kind of dropped down a little bit because there were no draws that missed. <laughs> if I was on a draw on the flop, I guess I I guess 6 7 misses or 7 10 misses. I guess those are two straights that miss, but 10 jack gets there. But if you are saying that you don't put me on an 8 or a 9, then you probably can't put me on 6-7 or 7-10 and 10 jack makes a straight on the turn so I'm beating ace queen at that point and there's no flush draws so I think she loses a little bit of credit in my mind when she says that a lot of draws missed because really no draws miss but uh, anyways let me know what you think on this hand I think this one was pretty interesting it's a hand I put her on her exact hand and I still didn't know what to do and I'm still not sure if what I did was right or wrong, because I think it's hard to call with a queen there. Even though it's ace-queen, I guess I guess you're supposed to make that call. I'm not 100% sure. Let me know what you think in the comments. All right, after that last hand, I rebuy for another 500. About five minutes later, I have ace-jack of hearts and the big blind. The under-the-gun player raises a 15. The hijack three bets to 45. And I'm trying to mix in more three and four bets with good but not amazing hands like ace jack suited so i four bet here to 175 and everybody ends up folding i think the spot is a good place to four bet i think 175 is too big i'm not sure exactly what i was thinking at the time if the three bet was bigger than 45 or if i just accidentally put out too many chips i i knew at the time 175 was too much as soon as i made the bet I think it's a good spot. I just think the bet's too big. It probably should be like 125 or 135 maybe. Not too long after that hand, I switch tables. I'm greeted before too long with pocket kings. The low jack limps for five. I raise from the high jack to 25. And only the low jack calls. The flop is nine queen seven with two spades. It's a pretty good flop for me. He checks. I bet 25 and he unfortunately folds on this one. Had a couple rough hands at that first table, but uh, I'm at a new table, getting dealt hands like pocket kings. Clearly it's going to be smooth sailing from here and uh, easy victories, getting the W's from here on out. I haven't been at this new table too long, and I'm in the big blind, and I'm dealt ace-king offsuit, so hands are looking good at this new one. The plus one player raises to 15, the hijack calls, I three bet to 65, Probably should be a little more since there was a caller of the raise to 15. 
the plus one player four bets to 120 and that's pretty scary i do of course have blockers to the two hands i'm really scared of being aces and kings and i'm not in that bad of a shape against anything other than aces or kings at the same time it's a 2-5 at bellagio and a lot of players aren't four bet almost min raising not aces or kings but like i said i haven't been here very long and i'm not really sure what to do i have 475 I think a call is probably okay, and I think a re-raise or a shove is probably also okay because of my blockers, but like I said, a Bellagio 2-5 game. Most players probably have aces or kings in this spot, but I haven't been here long enough to know for sure about this particular player and what he would do. I decide to go with the aggressive route, and I re-raise from 120 to 320, which is essentially committing myself all in at that point, since I only have 475. He does go all in. I am forced to call for my 180 or so more, but at that point, I, I feel pretty not great about it. Feels a lot like aces, and he does show pocket aces. The board comes out. I'm not gonna lie to you, I don't even remember what the board was. Uh, I had ace-king against pocket aces, and even though I've lost with pocket aces to ace-king more times than it seems like you should, uh, I don't pull out the victory here. So I lose my stack again, ace-king against aces. I thought somebody told me it was supposed to be smooth sailing at this new table, and I was supposed to be getting free chips easy money and all the w's and whoever said that was a damn liar i rebuy for 400 more for two reasons one i don't like money and two somebody told me it was supposed to be smooth sailing for the rest of the night so a little bit later i'm in the cutoff with 10 queen of diamonds the low jack makes it 15 the hijack calls and I like that hand good enough. I will call, and I do, for 15. The flop is 5 king jack with 1 diamond, but I'm open-ended. The low jack bets 20, the high jack folds, and I call. The turn is the 7 of diamonds, giving me the flush draw to go with my open-ended. The low jack bets 40. Here I raise to 110 with just a bunch of outs and the low jack calls the river is the jack of diamonds it's not my favorite diamond but the way my night's going i'm never getting away from my flush here if someone's got a full house they get my money and i go home sad faced the low jack bets 50 which is a pretty blockery kind of bet after i race to 110 on the turn i shove for about 220 she calls 170 more and I show my flush, and it's good. She doesn't show her hand. I'm not sure what she had. I would expect she probably had a jack, but she seemed like a pretty new player. I wouldn't even be shocked if she called with just a king there um, after playing with her for a little while. It was pretty clear she, she seemed like a pretty new player. But I do double up here, and like I said, I, I'm never getting away from my flush uh, for my stack at this point, and if that's the way my night was going to end, that's the way my night was going to end, but, uh, lucky for me here, I double up, and I'm on the comeback trail. These new chips are burning a hole in my pocket, or the felt, I'm not sure, but I've got new chips, and I need to play with them, so the very next hand, I have five six of hearts. We're a little short-handed, so I'm in the hijack slash cutoff. It gets folded to me, I raise to 20, the button calls and everybody else folds. The flop is eight of clubs, four of hearts, king of diamonds. So I only flop a gut shot here. I check and he also checks. The turn is the queen of hearts giving me the flush draw to go with my gut shot. I lead for 25 and he raises to 100. I have a bunch of outs here that are pretty sneaky I think so I do call. The river is not one of those outs. It's the nine of diamonds. I check and he bets 300. That's a pretty easy fold for me with six high. A little bit later, I have 10 jack offsuit as the only blind. The low jack raises to 15. The button calls and I call. The flop is jack, queen, king with jack, queen of diamonds. So bottom pair open-ended, that's okay. It gets checked to the button who bets 40. I call with 
uh, bottom pair and open-ended. The low jack folds. The turn is the queen of spades. Not a fan of that card. It gets checked around. And the river is the six of clubs. She bets 40. This is the same player who doubled me up with my flush. And I just don't really think third pair can possibly be good here. I think if she didn't have anything, she'd probably check. I don't think she's a player who's betting with nothing. And I really can't beat anything. So I think it's a pretty easy fold. And I lay it down. And this one, I'm in the plus one with jack queen offsuit and we're playing six handed i raise to 20 and only the low jack calls me and this guy actually get into a lot of hands in my last little while of playing and some of them are pretty interesting so those will be coming up he just sat down in the seat and seems like a pretty actiony player from the outset the flop is five eight jack rainbow i bet 20 and he calls the turn is the ace of clubs which is obviously not a card I particularly like. I continue betting though. I bet 45 and he calls again. The river is the four of hearts. I decide to check here. I'm probably going to call a reasonable river bet because there's a pretty real chance he doesn't have an ace and jack queen is probably good. But after I check, he checks behind so I don't have to consider that and I show jack queen and it's good. A little while after that, I'm in the under the gun straddle. I don't straddle too often but I will now and again the guy to my left who I was on the hand with last hand double straddles to 20 I have king jack offsuit the low jack whose first action calls the 20 the button calls the 20 and king jack seems pretty good here I raise to 75 which is too small it's just not enough before anyone calls the pot's already 37 and then there's two callers in front of me, so it's 77, and I raise to 75, so it's just too small. I think a raise is fine here, I just have to make a real raise. The double straddler, who's in the plus one, calls, the low jack calls, and the button calls. Because of course they do, I didn't raise enough. That was a bad raise. Good spot to raise, not a good value to raise. We are four ways to the flop, which is four, two, nine, rainbow. I'm first, that's a terrible flop for me. If I want to take a stab at it, I have to make a really big bet here. I don't really want to do that into three other people, especially with the double straddle next to me who could be running pretty much anything. And I just gave the other two players way too good of a price to call. So really anyone could have anything here and most of them have the range advantage over me. So I check. I think check is the correct play here with my hand against three other players. The plus one player bets 250. It gets folded to me, and even though I don't know if I really believe him, I just don't think there's anything I can really do here. So I fold, and he actually shows me 910 offsuit for top pair with a pretty good kicker. So it was a good thing I didn't take a stab at this pot. This one goes to the gentleman to my left who ends up being a pretty nice guy. We talked a lot about baseball. He's from Houston. We talked a little bit about how the Houston Astros cheat. That wasn't exactly his take on things, but it's everybody else's take other than the people in Houston. Uh, although to be fair to him, he said that if you uh, look in the right places, you can see that a lot of other baseball teams were also cheating at the same time. I know there's stuff about Yankees and Red Sox doing various things. I won't go way into baseball. I could talk baseball all day, but uh, Astro second are cheaters. Just a few hands later, I'm in the small blind with pocket jacks. Cutoff raises to 15. The button calls 15. I three bet to 75. The gentleman to my left, the big blind, calls and everybody else faults. The flop is ace of diamonds, ace of hearts, ten of spades, and that's kind of a good flop I guess I could have an ace and it's always better to see two of them than one if you have an under pair after my raise pre-flop to 75 I only have about 250 left so I'm not going to be able to get away from this one if he has a better pair or an ace or tens full uh, he just gets the rest of my stack and again I'm willing to go home sad faced at this point I'm first to act so I just shove and I'm willing to take down the pot and he snap calls me and that is not good that seems pretty bad actually 
After he snap calls, I say, uh-oh, I guess you got me. You have an ace. And he says he doesn't have an ace. So I feel like there's hope, although a snap call could also be kings or queens, although those might re-raise me pre-flop. I still don't know where I'm at, but uh, the board runs out. I don't remember what the cards were. Sorry, again, I was involved in pretty big hands. I didn't notate the turn and river, but I show pocket jacks and he shows pocket nines. There's no nine on the board, so I double through here. Which feels pretty good because after that snap call, I was not super optimistic. The very next hand, I'm on the button with king 10 offsuit. The straddle is on again. It folds to me and I raise to 40 and our friend in the small blind calls, and we're heads up again. He called many of my raises in the short time we played together. The flop is king high with two cards that are under that, both of which were clubs. They weren't really connected cards. I don't remember what they were. My apologies again. I will make sure next time I get all the boards. It was a long night and I was kind of running on fumes at this point, so I was trying to make sure I got the important things, but uh, missed the two other cards. I bet 65 with my top pair 10 kicker and a runner runner club draw to the king, and he calls. The turn is the four of clubs, which does give me now the flush draw to the king. He checks to me, I bet 100, and he calls again. My hand feels pretty strong. I have top pair, a 10 kicker, and I have a big club draw. The river is the nine of spades. He checks to me, and I decide to check this river. I don't think there's a ton of value in betting here. I don't think much worse can call me, and I don't want to walk into a big hand. I feel like king 10 is probably good, though. I'm expecting to win this hand by checking and showing down. But to my surprise, he shows king-queen offsuit and the queen plays. So uh, his kicker wins it for him, and I'm a little surprised. I thought I was probably going to have the best hand there, and uh, it's a good thing I didn't bet the river. I saved myself some money. Literally the very next hand, I have queen-10 offsuit in the cutoff. It gets folded to me again. I raise to 20, and our nemesis, our frenemy on the button here, calls once again and the small and big blind also call. The flop is 9-10 jack, with 10 jack being spades. That seems like a pretty okay flop. I have middle pair and I'm open-ended, but I could definitely be behind and there's a lot of other tricky hands that could already be making straights and two pairs, things like that. It gets checked to me, I bet 40, and surprisingly, our buddy on the button folds and only the big blind calls. The turn is the seven of spades. That doesn't do anything for me. In fact, it's a pretty bad card. Uh, spades come in. I don't have any spades for the redraw. And an eight makes a straight. That's just a pretty bad card. He checks and I check behind. The river is the 10 of hearts, which is a pretty good card. I have three tens, the good kicker, but there's still four to the straight on the board for an eight. There's still spades out there. I don't have a full house. There's a lot of things that beat me. He checks to me, and in hindsight, a check is probably right here, even with three tens, although maybe someone with a jack could call. I bet 75. He folds. I don't love the river bet, but I think it's an okay situation to bet and then fold to a raise. Most people can't raise there without at least a straight, maybe a flush, maybe a full house. So if I get raised, I know I'm beat with three of a kind. It's possible someone could call me with a jack if they think I'm bluffing. So I don't hate the bet, but at the same time, there's just a lot of things that can beat me and I would have to fold to a raise. A little bit later, I have ace nine of diamonds in the cutoff. Gets folded to me. I raise to 20. Our buddy to the left on the button calls. He must know I'm easy money. He called pretty much every one of my raises. And the small blind also calls. The flop is seven of clubs, nine of clubs, three of clubs. So I do flop top pair. It's the uh, wrong color and shape. I always kind of hate these boards. I think they're super dangerous, obviously. Anyone with a club draw can easily get there. I only have one pair. Someone could already have a flush, but at the same time, I have top pair with an ace kicker, so it's hard to get away from. So that's why I hate these hands. I just think these boards are tough to play. Not a fan. 
the small blind leads for 25. I should probably raise and see where I'm at, but I just call and the button also calls. The turn is the king of hearts. That's not a great card. It does get checked to me. I bet 60 with my second pair top kicker and our buddy on the button calls and now the small blind folds. The river is the six of hearts, so at least the clubs didn't come in. I'm sitting with flopped top pair that turned into second pair with the nut kicker. So the run out is sort of decent for me. I decide to bet 130. I'm not sure how I feel about that bet, but that's what I came up with at the time. And he once again snap calls me, which again makes me feel not great. I feel like that is, that is not uh, probably going to be a good thing. And I say, I just have a nine. And he asked me what my kicker is, which all of a sudden makes me feel great because that would be a pretty random question if it didn't matter. So I tell him an ace and I show it and he is not super happy. He doesn't show his hand, but he has a nine and mucks his hand. So I've gotten good value um, off snap calls from this particular gentleman who I guess just doesn't believe me. Maybe he's watched my videos and seen my terrible bluffs that I tend to put through in all my videos, including probably this one against the ace queen. But uh, here I get paid again with a pretty marginal hand. For the last hand of the vlog, I'm in the big blind with ace five offsuit. The under the gun straddle is on from our buddy. It folds to me and I raise to 25. I probably should raise more because he's going to call anything for 15 here, but he's also called pretty much all of my raises. I don't think he's folding to any reasonable raise. Even if I raise to 35, I think he's going to call me. Either way, he calls. The flop is ace, eight, four, all spades. I have the five of spades, and of course I have top pair with a five kicker. I lead for 30, and he calls. This is again just another one of these boards I don't really like. The turn is the three of clubs. I lead for 60, and he raises to 160. This guy definitely has the potential to put bluffs on, and he's pretty action-y, but I really don't love my hand. I have top pair on a three spade board. He's in the straddle, so he could have any two cards here. I have the redraw to the five of spades, but that's not a great spade. That's not probably what I'm trying to win with. Even if he's semi-bluffing, I figure he's probably doing that with a better spade, so he has outs even though there's only one card left to come. I tank for a while and I just think I'm behind so many things. I don't want to call off here and then potentially have to call a big river bet with what I don't consider to be a strong hand on this board. So I fold. He shows me 8-10 with the 10 of spades. So he had middle pair and the 10 of spades draw. So I was of course ahead here, but he did have quite a few outs to an 8, a 10, or uh, any spade. So... He ends up winning this one. It's a good, I think it's a good raise in his spot. He's got, he's got a middle pair and a, and a lot of draws and outs. And it's tough for me to call without a real hand, uh, a pretty big hand, I think. So I don't hate folding here, even though I was ahead. And that's how my session ends. All right, what's going on, everyone? It's about 2 a.m. I'm in for 1,600, out for 607 for a loss of what I'm just going to call about 1,000. I guess that's 993 if you want to do actual math. But uh, not a great night. Um, got flush over flushed early. Guess I made a couple bad bets with my king queen against the ace queen, and then re raise shoving with ace king against aces. But that's just kind of unfortunate that it worked out that way. A couple tough spots, a couple tough hands. Uh, I tried to fight back. I got a couple hundred back toward the end. But uh, not a great night. They go that way sometimes, but hopefully, uh, hopefully the next session will be better. All right, everybody. Thanks for watching. That's going to do it for this vlog. I hope you enjoyed it. If so, please do like and subscribe and comment. That does help my channel a lot. And like I said, I'm trying to get to a thousand subscribers uh, for monetization purposes. YouTube already has some commercials for some of my vlogs, but uh, I don't get any of that money until I hit a thousand subscribers. So if you want to help me make $20 a month or something uh, from my vlogs, that's a good way to do it. I'm not asking you for any other money other than uh, 
when I asked for you to help me buy the angels, and I did not really get uh, too many takers on that. So this is an easy way to help that doesn't involve buying the angels. Thanks for watching, everyone, and hopefully we'll see you next time.